The sheer complexity of the Matrix universe leads to countless questions without answers. After all, it is a story with philosophical themes mixed within an action and science fiction film. However, this does not mean that we cannot find the answers, or at least theories that could explain them. That is the purpose of these videos, to answer the questions that you submit. Questions like why does the Oracle smoke? Or why do the architect and the oracle respond with the same condescending tone when talking about one another to Neo? And who freed Trinity from the simulation? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. The Oracle is presented as an elderly woman who lives in the projects, a lower middle class woman who spends her days babysitting and baking. She is the loving grandmother stereotype. This facade inspires confidence in the red pills, making it easier for them to accept her words and follow her orders. At least that is the case with Morpheus and his crew. It was surprising to everyone when Neil talked to the Oracle in the park in Matrix Reloaded and discovered that she was a program. If I had to guess, I'd say you're a program from the machine world. So is he. So far, so good. This led us to reevaluate everything we knew about her and analyze her behavior. The Oracle has certain mannerisms that don't make sense for a program like her. One is that she is a smoker. Why is this? There are two possible explanations. One is that smoking humanizes her. Smoking helps build the illusion that she is a human just like any of the red pills that meets her for the first time. None have ever suspected her of being a program, much less being one of the most important programs of the Matrix. Another thing that she likes to do often is to cook and offer sweets to others, again to build up the illusion that she is a real person. Yet there is an overlooked detail about the Oracle, which is that she does things in ones. She offers Neo to take one cookie, she smokes one cigarette per meeting, and she eats one candy at the park. This may symbolize the fact that she is a program created by the machines, and the machines only use what is necessary. Unlike humans who tend to overindulge in everything, such as eating sweets or smoking. Why do the architect and the oracle give Neo a similar condescending response when one is talking about the other? If I am the father of the Matrix, she would undoubtedly be its mother. The Oracle. Please. The Architect told me that if I didn't return to the Source, Zion would be destroyed by midnight tonight. Please. You and I may not be able to see beyond our own choices, but that man can't see past any choice. We've already discussed this in previous videos. However, we haven't directly answered why both act patronizing when their counterpart is being mentioned. The architect's reason is that the name Oracle is absurd. When Neo says the name, which comes from Greek mythology and human superstitions about prophecies and miracles, the architect regards the name as ridiculous. Now he doesn't say that the name is ridiculous, but his tone says it all. He knows that the so-called Oracle is a mere intuitive program and that her prophecies aren't fortune telling. They are predictions based on past experiences and her growing understanding of human behavior. For the architect, the Oracle is a program that predicts possible outcomes, just like himself. The difference is that the Oracle emulates instincts and tries to understand human emotions. The architect uses pure logic, yet they are one and the same, two sides of the same coin, if you will. Yet when Neo asked the Oracle about the architect, she reacted the same way, but not for the same reasons. The architect told me that if I didn't return to the source, Zion would be destroyed by midnight tonight. Please. You and I may not be able to see beyond our own choices, but that man can't see past any choice. Why not? He doesn't understand them. He can't. To him, they are variables in an equation. One at a time, each variable must be solved and counted. That's his purpose, to balance the equation. In a previous video, we explained how Neo's choices are illusions created by the Oracle. So when she reacts similar to the architect, she is simply pretending. She knows that the architect can't see beyond any choices because choice is an illusion of her own making. 
The architect may not function emotionally as the oracle does, but he can see that all the so-called choices led Neo down a predictable path. You are the eventuality of an anomaly which, despite my sincerest efforts, I have been unable to eliminate from what is otherwise a harmony of mathematical precision. While it remains a burden assiduously avoided, it is not unexpected and thus not beyond a measure of control, which has led you inexorably here. We could say that the architect speaks the truth about the oracle, but the oracle is lying about the architect. She is manipulating Neo, making him think that the architect isn't as smart as she is. She even implies that Neo can see beyond what the architect can. If choice is indeed an illusion, as the creators of the Matrix once declared. Well, the whole, the whole arc of the path is that the first one shows these, this sort of choice world of red and blue pill, but then the second one gets to the same exact paradigm. So there's two doors. The doors are exactly the same as the red pill, blue pill. But the whole point is that by the time Neo is at the door, you want the audience to be conjoined with Neo so that you understand that there is no choice, that choice is in itself an illusion. Then the Oracle's condescending response was to simply continue manipulating Neo. Though there is the possibility that over time, the Oracle may begin to believe that there can be choices made by humans that can change the future. But that's for another video. And our last question of the day, who freed Trinity from the Matrix? Trinity was a hacker, maybe one of the best hackers in the world. She hacked the IRS database and gained worldwide infamy. My name is Trinity. Trinity. The Trinity that cracked the IRS database. That was a long time ago. Her life is parallel to Neo's. When she met him for the first time, she talks about how Neo was searching for an answer to a question, just as she did. You know, because I was once looking for the same thing. I was looking for an answer. Trinity, like Neo, was freed by Morpheus. We don't exactly know when this happened, but based on the way Neo talked about her, that she was a legend among hackers, makes us believe that it has been years since she was freed. During that time, characters like Ghost and Cypher fell in love with Trinity. Though their feelings were unrequited, she was waiting for the one, as the Oracle prophesied. There are rumors that Trinity's real name will be revealed in Matrix 4, her name being Tiffany. We may perhaps see a version of Trinity that never woke up from the Matrix. The same has also been rumored about Neo. It would be interesting to see Thomas Anderson meeting Tiffany, not remembering that they were once lovers. A new version of their reality where they never met Morpheus. Leave in the comments below what other questions you would like us to answer. For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.